Hello and welcome again to Farmbook. So uh, for people interested in planting broccoli, um, different types of cultivars and so forth and um, yeah, time of year you need to plant them and so on. Uh, we recently had a look at um, Mr. Carter's field day, uh, at field day at a different kind of uh, broccoli. So yeah, we speak to the, or talk to the Zindi and um, she tells us a little bit more about the cultivars and uh, what's the suitability of everything. Enjoy! Moving on to the broccolis. Okay, so I'm starting you guys off with one of our new, very exciting varieties for summer. Any of you broccoli farmers, have you ever grown broccoli? What do you guys grow? Cabbage. Okay, great. You guys can lead the conversation there, okay? <laughs> okay, so RS is one of our new uh, summer varieties. It's a very fast maturing variety, but it's also got a very nice dome shape. If you look at that, look at that perfect dome. This is what you want to put in the punnet. Okay, um, we the, the nice thing about RS is that it's got a nice color, so it doesn't turn brown that easily. If you look at one of our comp competitors here, we're not putting anyone down. We just want to show you the different structure. That's a very open, small plant structure. Do you see that? And do you see the color of the heads? If you would go, as a consumer, go into a shop, would you buy that head if it was on a pallet? I would rather leave it. But this one, same season, fertilized the same way, because it's got a nicer structure, it just keeps the head closer a bit. Okay. Also something that we look for as product developers, you try to see something that's got the same bead size, so it looks more uniform to the consumer. This one, also very uniform bead size. Okay. So whereas Aureus was a perfect pre-packer, imagine tends also a summer um, broccoli, tends to be a little bit longer stemmed. If you look at this, this head that we harvested here, it's not a perfect punnet, punnet pre-packer, but you can process it as a brocket. You know, a lot of people, you've seen this in bulwars and in pick and pays and stuff. A lot of the housewives now use this because then nothing goes to waste. They'll only use, like the packet usually has about five or six in like this, and they'll use everything at, in the one evening. And, and the myth that it's healthier to use the, the stock, is, is there more nutrients or is it just the myth? The no, I don't believe that there's more nutrients. I mean, it's, it comes from the same thing. They, they physically break off this part. So I think the people usually prepare this in a different way. They used to boil this until there's nothing left. So I've also heard that myth, but I think that people usually prepare this by only steaming it. And that's why it kept the nutrients in. So it's not about what's in the, it's, it's the preparation method, the method that's different. Okay, moving on. Any questions, guys? Feels like we're running through here. Guys, can please stop me. You can ask me about the politics if you want to. I'm not going to answer you, but you can ask me. Days to maturity? Um, summer and winter? Okay, so in summer, Ares and Naxos, for example, which is the perfect summer varieties, they take about 65 to 75 days. Okay. We start cutting them. It's a very, this is a very big deal. But usually in, in winter, they would go to 75 days and upwards. Okay, so it's just a little bit slow. Start with Kola. Alles fat must be a bit longer. Okay, so Triton is also one of our new summer cultivars. Um, this is not a fair representation. I actually, I, I shouldn't have put the head here and I'm going to throw it away as soon as you guys leave. But this, it's actually a smaller, also a nice bunnet size, but it's over mature. It is a faster maturing variety. We're talking about 62 days. Um, I think Jan and myself harvested some of the heads at 58 days already. Ares and Triton, it was a bit frier than snow. Okay. This is also a very nice color. It's also a very nice dome shape. Even though it's over mature, you can still see the dome shape here. If you compare it to imagine that's they were born there. Parthenon is one of our best sellers and it's also something that's used by the processors a lot because they don't particularly care, like we said about the dome shape. It becomes a bit knobbly in summer. Do you see it becomes a bit knobbly? It's actually a winter cultivar. Okay, so because we had Parthenon and it really is an excellent cultivar for winter, we were focusing a lot on developing summer varieties and that's where RS and Naxos and the new Triton comes in. Okay, Specifically for that summer slot. Why this does one, it go nobly in, in, uh, um, if you plant a winter variety in the summer? I think it's just because it's out of slot. It's not happy. So the formation of the head is not as uniform. Okay. So yeah, the plant doesn't yeah, utilize the nutrients. Yeah, I also think uh, the summer broccolis are adapted to... Because uh, every or most of the, 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 the brassicas are normally for, for winter. So some of the new varieties are more adapted for summer itself. Yes. I also think that um, the temperature fluctuations. Mm. Brassicas are very sensitive to cold nights and extremely hot days. 
and especially the winter stuff because they're not used to getting those extremely you know high heat units and that's why Parthenon you know that's that's their way of showing that listen I'm not happy in the slot okay what would be your your major disease risks regarding um, let's say broccoli and cauliflower I guess it would be the same that would depend on your area if you go up north and to all those areas there's a new there's a, there's a disease called brassica stunting disorder and that is a very big challenge for growers up there also in this area there's a lot of development work being done on it and if you go up to the cape they they struggle with white blister and white blister is a, a fungus yes and it grows on the leaves and sometimes it goes to the heads and that's the problem then it becomes unmarketable it's physically like a, a blister full of spores so it also distributes very easily so it depends on which area you are if you're a cabbage grower in certain areas black rot mm. can really just yeah and um, uh what is Nematite is a big problem. Damping off. Uh, damping off is a problem for all seedlings, I think. Yeah, seedlings. All seedlings struggle with damping off. Um Clubroot. Clubroot is a great problem for boy And work for boy for in a brassica. All brassica grows. Clubroot is a big problem. Naxos. Excellent summer variety. We are very excited about this variety as well. So it's got the perfect dome shape. Um, you'll see that I'm referring to the dome shape because the biggest market for broccolis and collies is the pre-packer. It's not processed stuff. Processed stuff goes to McCain and you know all those veggies that you buy, the frozen veggies? I mean it's only a, a part of the mixture. There's a lot of other veggies in there but the biggest market for collies and brocs is the pre-packer that you go and buy fresh in the market. I just quickly want to show you guys something. Um, on the pot, sorry. Sorry. So if you look at the Parthenon here, you'll see that there's, there's a bit of hollow stem. You see the stem is cracking there. So this is not a big problem. It doesn't make it unmarketable. But the problem is that you don't have such a long shelf life. It's exposed and it can get rotten in there. A lot of the new summer stuff, on the other hand, looks very nice in the core. Which means that it will last longer on, on the planet as well. Okay. I just quickly wanted to show you that while I saw it. And you'll definitely get a better color with the summer varieties. They are more green because uh, most of the buyers, the, the supermarket groups, they don't like a color, the blue-green color on, on, your colli uh, on your broccolis in the summer. So they prefer a more green uh, variety. And you'll see with an RS, the Noxos, they are much more green, the color, mm. uh, rather than your Parthenon that's not well adapted. You'll see it's a blue-green or purple-green. So the greens are, are looking much nicer as well. The purple green also tends to become a bit browner. So you'll see that the broccoli guys talk about brown beads. That means that it doesn't it doesn't have a storability. So as soon as you harvest it and you go and put it in the cold room, it turns a bit brown on the head. It just that's it's just something that goes with that blue green colour. So you have to find something that suits the, you know the, the climatic condition that you're currently planting. Just quickly back, who here grows any brassicas? Okay, yellow. In, you let yeah, cool. I, I, yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of diseases did you struggle with? Uh, black rot, but not too bad. bad. We were planting on ridges. Okay. And then pests was the problem. Okay. And diamond back was the summer. Yes, your diamond back was very bad. I know. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay, so just quickly back on brassica stunting disorder. I just quickly wanted to, if you guys want to go read up anything on that, it's now called Yellow's Turnips Virus. Okay. It's a very devastating. In which area are you guys? Limpo Bode, close to Narbonne Sprayed area. See, so you guys should have it. It's something that I think the yellow peach aphid transmits it. Yeah, we, we do no. struggle with it yet. Okay. Uh, the leaves turn purple and the whole plant just goes to a standstill. So you don't have any yield and that's the problem. Okay. So you guys can be happy that you're not so struggling with sports, it yet. In sports. And yes. I, I guess the, uh, um, the control of that would just be to control the aphids at the end of the, the day. That's the biggest, that's the best control that you can do. There's obviously stuff like you can drench of confidor and stuff like that as a seedling because obviously there's, um, there's days that you have to keep in mind just maturity you can't use those harsh chemicals then but controlling the efforts controlling any pest that's mm. still I think also something that a lot of farmers don't take into account is getting rid of all that extra field and stuff next to the fields because that just harvests the pests they just go and stay there they just wait there for you to plant new stuff and then they just come back into the field okay so clear your fields around yes keep it clean so that's it for uh, broccoli. Uh, have a look at the other videos. We've got a, a, um, a bunch more, uh, specifically on um, cabbage, uh, broc of uh, cauliflower, tomatoes, 
and a bit later on we're doing butternuts and carrots as well so um uh, keep on the lookout on our facebook page um and hope you, hope you guys enjoyed it until next time cheers